So that pile of parts you see sitting on my counter here is actually going to become something functional and useful. It is a ham radio dual band high gain Yagi antenna for 2 meters and 440 and today we're going to be putting this together. It's the AY04 Alliance high gain antenna. All right, everybody, welcome back. So this is something that I have wanted for a while. I have always just used regular old vertical antennas, nothing fancy, you know. And uh, I wanted to put together a uh, an antenna for use for 2-meter sideband and 440 sideband, as well as uh, possible locations where I'm going to really need to focus my signal into a repeater if I'm somewhere remote during some kind of activation, emergency, or whatever. So that's what this type of an antenna does. Now I'm going to give you a quick look here at a piece of paper. That's what it's going to look like when it's assembled. Now don't freak out. If you want this antenna, this is not hard to put together. Um, they do have an installation video on uh, YouTube. It's very stop motion and very quick. Um, you know, they sped it up and he was snapping pieces together and everything. I want to give you a little information on this. We're going to put it together today and then next week or sometime after that I'm going to make some contacts with it. But the first thing we're going to do is put it together and tell you all about it because this is a really good deal for a dual band Yagi beam antenna. These, these run uh, $94.99. Now normally if you know these types of antennas you're looking at $150, $200, $300. So this is one heck of a good deal. This is all aluminum construction. It is UHF and VHF. So your length on this is going to be 92.5 centimeters or 36.4 inches. On VHF you'll have three elements. On UHF you'll have five elements. Let me show you an assembled picture a little bit better. So that's your UHF, that's your VHF end there. Okay, Very good for directionality. Um, if, you, if you are an area where, or if you have a HT and you can't get out, or you're in an area where there's a very, very distant antenna and you're having trouble getting into it, you point one of these things at it and you will get in. It's got a lot of gain, very strong directionality. They're great for long distance communications and they're awesome for 2 meter sideband and 440 sideband. If you are a... Uh, a tech that happens to have a sideband rig and you want to get into that and try it out a little bit, give you a little feel of HF and what it's like, you know, even though you're on VHF and UHF, it's, it's a fun thing to do. So they're super lightweight, definitely a budget price on it. I, mean, I, I can't begin to tell you, for, you know, I, I watched Yagi antennas for ages and I just couldn't justify it because most of what I do around here is either simplex or talking in repeaters. And, you know, I was like, ah, you know, that's like 250 bucks or 300 bucks. I can't do it. For less than $100, you're going to have this thing here. And to put it together, I know this looks like it's crazy. To put it together is very, very simple. We're going to walk you through that in a second. So you've got, on VHF, you've got a gain of 9.5 dBi. That's pretty darn good. That's a whole lot. On uh, UHF, 11.5 dBi. Your maximum input power on this is going to be 100 watts. And your front-to-back ratio is 12 dBs. You can polarize this horizontal or vertical. So if you want to put it sideways, it is set up to be mounted sideways. That's where your mounting thing is going to be, and you'll hang off like this. In other words, it'll look like this, and your antenna pole will go through here, and your connection will go there, your PL259 connector. That's this guy right here, okay? And it's colored. It's got a piece of plastic on it. So that will go there, and this will connect to your antenna pole. Real simple. So that's actually the first step we're going to do. So let's get moving and setting this up and putting it together. All right, we got all the commotion and stuff back a little so I can show you here. This is your main part here. That's okay, your main element. That's going to be facing forward, all right? And you want this back piece here, the shorter of the two. You'll notice there's two pieces. This is the shorter of the two, okay? And you're going to line that up with these holes for the screws on your piece here. So you see you got a hole there and a hole there. It's going to go on just like that. And you're going to put your screws in here and in here. So let me do that real quick, and then we'll build the back. All right, so there you go. There's your first piece put together. Very, very simple. Now, I will tell you something. These screws are a tight fit, okay? Be careful not to strip them. Remember, you're trying to get this to set up so it's in there really good, solid contact. They are a tight fit, and that's why you don't want these to come loose. So basically, I started using a screwdriver. I felt it slipping. I started using this one and felt it not. It was going to be really difficult to put in. So very, very carefully, I used the drill, an electric drill with my little head on it, and it slid right in there perfectly, didn't give me any problems. So be careful when you're putting the screws in. Remember, this is aluminum, and it can strip. 
Um, I want to give you a quick look at why I'm, why I'm doing this via picture and not via the instructions. That was the instructions they sent, and they know about it. I've let them know that the, you know, the panels were, the uh, instructions were just, you know, I couldn't even read what they had on there. You have to, like, really go up close to look at that. So, that's why we're doing it via a, a picture. So, anyway, that's going to be right like that, right there, okay? That's where we're at. So, we've got to put on our, the rest of our elements on this end here. Then we've got to put one in here, and then build that one there. So, that's the first thing we're going to do is going to build these two, screw them together, and they will use the smaller screws, I believe. And we will uh, put that together and try it out. Actually, before I do that, I wanted to put the front piece on here, too. So now, here's, our, here's what we got here. And here's our diagram. There we go. So we're looking good so far. Looks like everything's uh, going according to plan. So now I'm going to start putting in the beams, the elements. So as you can see here, there's a number 7. And we'll that up to you. Number seven and number eight. And that's what's going to go in those. So we're going to find seven and eight, put them together, and then we're going to put the elements up top here. And again, I'm not going to film all this because it's really simple. You're going to do one, two, three, and four. Everything here is labeled. If I can get it, here's seven. Okay. And obviously, seven's going to go on the back of that, so that's going to go back there. So we're going to put those in really quick. I'm going to put the elements in. They just screw right in. They're very simple. And you're just going to follow the numbers. Then we're going to add on any pieces like on here that need to be added on. Okay? I'll bring you back once that's all done. So just a quick update here. Just really simple. I put the two in. Here's number three matching up with number three. See the numbers? You'll just put that hole right in the center there. Draw your, put your screw in and be good to go. So I'm going to continue building. All right. There we go. First three elements are in. I'm saving one for last because the sticker for one fell off, so I want to see which one is left. Um, that uh, doesn't uh, hasn't hasn't the odd man out hasn't been put in there yet, so that's going to be the last one. We're going to do uh, the seven and eight now, and then we're going to add the little extensions on. You see the little holes there. We're going to add the extensions on for the correct length. So you see, this is starting to look kind of like a a TV antenna for you new hams who maybe have not seen something like this before. So it's looking like one of those old school TV antennas. And to you folks that have done this before, um, if I'm doing something incorrectly or the incorrect order, please let me know. Um, I'm brand new. I've never put together a beam antenna before. Okay, this is my first time. I have used them in the past, and I've helped friends put them together, but I've never done it on my own and with nothing but a picture. So <laughs> I did watch the video, like I told you. Alliance has a video up that's it's it's okay. It kind of gives you an idea, but it's very jerky, fast stop motion kind of. And it's not slow enough to say, okay, what we're going to do next is here, here. It's just, you know, buzzing around and installing stuff. So if I'm doing something wrong, let me know. Okay, let me finish up the elements and I'll bring all right, you back. All the elements but one are in, and I obviously have found one. It's the only one left here that needs additional elements put onto it on the end. So that's what we're going to do next. Um, unfortunately, the, the one sticker is literally right here on my bench. I was like, no, not that. But it's no big deal, because that's what I figured I'd do. I just build it to the last part. So all of the end pieces, the ends of the elements, are all the same. There's no special ones anywhere, okay? So you're literally just going to put them on. I don't know if you can see the end here. You're just going to put them in here, and you'll use the smaller screws to put those in. Now, I know this is kind of a cramped quarters to be seeing this. I promise you I'm going to give you a full view of this when it's done. We're going to put it up against the wall and take a picture of it, show you exactly what it's like. And uh, I'll give you a little more information on it. But first, I want to get these pieces put on here. Okay? And they're fairly simple. Again, these are much smaller screws. These are the screws. Let me explain this quickly, too. These are the screws you're going to be screwing your elements in with. Okay? Bigger. These are the screws you're going to be putting the little extenders on there for each of the top and bottom elements, the reflector and the uh, director there. That's what you're going to be. They're much smaller. So that's where... A good precision screwdriver comes in handy. Um, so that's what we're going to do now. Let me put on uh, one up there, and we'll bring you back to show you how to put on these little uh, end pieces here. I'm not sure if I'm using the correct terminology, them end pieces. <laughs> but uh, we will put that together for you and uh, bring you back. All right, so that's pretty much the hard part. Um, and it wasn't all that difficult. As you can tell here, we have some uh, extending pieces to put on over here, the front and the back, but that should be fairly simple. Um, again, they're going to be not any particular order. 
doesn't matter which ones you use. This will be your little clamp for your uh, for your thing. We'll put that on at the end for your pole. And that's how it's going to go up. Now, in a later video, I'm going to put this up on a temporary pole of some kind. And we're actually going to try it out and make some contacts with it. But um, I just want to put it together today and do a quick assembly video for you to let you see it's not difficult. Um, most of these antennas of these type do come unassembled. And you will have to put them together. But the benefit and the performance you're going to get from a beam antenna will greatly improve your communications. So let me screw on these end pieces. I'm going to give you. I'm going to get one set up and ready for you to show you how it's done, and we'll go right. from there. There you go. Just any any piece will do. There's no numbers or rhyme or reason. You want to line up the holes. I hope you can see that on video, as best you can. You know it'll be a little off, but the screw will take care of the the rest of the alignment. You're just going to put that screw in there and gently screw it in, just like that. That simple. So. We're going to keep finishing these up. It's quite a bit of trip down there. We're going to finish these up, and I'm going to show you what it looks like fully assembled. I'm going to take a nice wide shot. We're probably going to go outside just to let you see what it looks like, although it's crazy windy out there. <laughs> we'll let you see there what you it go. looks like. That's how simple it is. So let's finish these up, show you this up against the wall, give you a little last info on it. This is going to be a you know a big antenna. You're not going to be having This isn't a tiny little antenna, but it's not gigantic you know it's not like something ridiculous this could easily fit in a car you could easily take these elements off and take it with you in a vehicle or even just the end pieces here and here and stuff it in your car if you were doing something you know mobile or some kind of emergency you were driving to so it's very simple to take apart not difficult at all let me finish up the end pieces on each uh, of the radials here and on the radials <laughs> on each of the beams and uh, we will go from there all right finishing up the last part of the element here the last connection. Now remember when you are tightening these up, these are aluminum. You want to give them a good snug, but you don't want to go too nuts and strip them out. Because this is all aluminum and these screws are, you know, not the most expensive screws in the world. Alright, let's get this up on a wall and I'll show you what it looks like and about give you an idea about how it works. Alright, so there you go. It's all assembled. That's what it looks like. But you got your, your five elements for VHF and your three elements for UHF. Very simple to put together. When I started doing this video, I was like, gosh, I hope this doesn't run ridiculously long. Um, but I don't want to do like the test of it and the build of it in the same video. So we're going to do the test um, next week. We're going to give it a try. Call up my friend. I think it's kind of funny. i got to call him on the phone to say, hey, get on your radio. <laughs> and we'll try it out on the on two-meter sideband and see how well it works. Uh, but uh, I'm definitely pleased with it so far. It went together a lot easier than I thought it would. Now, um, there will be a little bit of an optical illusion. You'll think that the bottom is longer than the top, the middle element. It isn't. It's the exact same. I even measured it. I was like, wait a minute. That's weird. But it is pre-tuned. It's all set up. It's all ready to go. Um, no hassles. One, uh, I read somebody who was complaining um, about the lack of uh, a, uh, a way to uh, tune it. And um, I was kind of like, heck, I'm glad it came pre-tuned. This is my first beam antenna. The last thing I want to do is start doing that now. <laughs> uh, but I'm pretty pleased with it. i got to say, it's not heavy at all. Um, I'll walk over there and show you. I mean, this thing is fairly, fairly lightweight aluminum. There's not much to it. And it's very well made. You know, and as far as wind rating, I believe they say it could take 120 mile an hour winds. Um, I think a lot of that has to do with what kind of pole you have it on, too. So we will be putting the connector for the pole on there, on the bottom as well, those two little, those two little holes. And uh, that's pretty much it. So we're going to try this out. Um, usually I don't do videos on Wednesdays and Thursdays, so we will try it out next week, uh, next weekend, and we'll see how well it works. i got a feeling it's going to be a pretty solid performer, and I'm definitely psyched because I've wanted a beam antenna for ages to work 2 meter um, sideband. I want to be able to uh, test that out a little bit, even though it's QRP rig, it doesn't have a ton of power. Uh, I want to be able to test that out and see if I can make some contacts with it. I uh, definitely want to do that maybe field day, along with the HF part end things. So, I'm pretty pleased with it so far. Anyway, folks, that's the video for today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like I said, these run $94.99, so for less than $100, bucks, you are getting yourself a quality dual-band beam antenna. Um, if you guys have been looking for, you you know, new hams and stuff, have been looking for a beam antenna to find out what they're all about and everything, um, I've noticed that all the sites only sell the 440 version. Now, another thing I used to do ages ago was satellite work. And, you know, you, you watch online. I used a, a satellite tracking program online. 
and you watch when the satellite's over, and it was an FM repeater. I think it was AO51, and I used to make contacts on that as it passed over. You know, it passed over the horizon, and I'd hit it, and I was doing that with a vertical antenna. So now, with a beam, I can sit there, and I can take a piece of pipe and hold this thing anywhere I want it. I want to be able to talk to the space station. Um, when they pass over, I believe they got their amateur radio stuff uh, fixed up there. They did a spacewalk uh, last week sometime to get the uh, radio working again. So, uh, you know, that kind of stuff can all be done with ham radio, as well as just talking to your friends. And if you're in a situation where you've got a low-power radio, far, far away from a repeater, this can be a solution to your problems. You can point this in the general direction of the repeater, and you will definitely be putting out a good signal. Anyway, folks, I thank you for watching today. I tried not to make this video too long. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. It's hard to show every little part of the building, but um, I hope that I was able to give you a little bit of help if you buy this antenna, and I thank you guys for watching. Stay safe and stay prepared.